So one of the keys to getting easy and good looking astro images is guiding. What we're gonna do tonight, guys, is we are gonna set up my auto guider from scratch for you guys right here on the channel. What's up, guys? It's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Astro Image channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We do all kinds of nice basic astrophotography stuff. Probably will never see an A-pod here on the channel, but there's nothing wrong with that. So tonight we're doing something pretty easy. We're gonna shoot a real nice big target. And I just got the Radian Raptor 60 all set up and everything wired up on the Skywatcher. Recently I've made some changes on the software and the setup. So we're gonna redo all of our auto guiding setup from scratch tonight. Show you guys how easy it is to do and give you some really great results. We'll walk you through everything. Well, the first thing we want to talk about is the setup. You know, we got the tripod all set up, the Skywatcher EQ6R all set up on the scope buggy. It's locked down, so it's not moving anywhere. We've got all of our cables nice and routed, really good. I've checked in all axes, so we don't have to worry about snags or anything else earlier in the daytime you definitely want to check this out i noticed i was getting some snags down here but we've got them all wrapped up now and we've got all kinds of clearance now the other important thing is balance balance is one of those things that people will talk to you about and they'll say that maybe you want your scope to be east heavy maybe you want it to be neutral whatever we want to balance the scope in right ascension which is the way that the mount rotates and declination which is the way it points like this now i like to have my balance just hanging right on the edge tip the weight until it starts pulling it down and then i just then i pull it back just ever so slightly that way there's just a little bit of resistance left on those gears to take up any kind of slack make them all mesh real good together and that will help us get a better results so really the only thing i need to do besides wait for darkness is get my guide scope focused i just swapped it out for my orion guide scope here with the asi 290 mini camera we need to get that all into focus once it gets dark and then we can start our guiding preparations but first let's take a look at some software so I said that we recently made a change to software and what we changed to to control our scope is to the green swamp server which is like the new age version of a program called EQ mod now EQ mod is kind of like an old school interface that's been around for years and it's kind of a privately developed open source type of thing that worked with Orion Skywatcher mounts. Now the Green Swamp, the Green Swamp server is the newer age version of that. The interface looks beautiful. You've got that nice little 3D view of like where your scope's pointed to, but the setup and everything behind the scenes is really a lot better when it comes to th doing things that will help us get better guiding. So the first thing I've done is I've gone into here and set up our guiding rate. Of course, we want to be able to connect to the mount. All Skywatcher mounts run at a, a speed of 115200. You got to make sure you're on the right COM port. And then a guiding rate of around 0.9 was what we used to use on EQ mod. This will go up to 1.0 or 100, but we're going to leave it at 90 for now and see how things go. And in the background, I'm running PHD2, which is pretty much another open source premier guiding program. We'll be running with the multi point star guiding and all that. So we're gonna do some guiding training and all that kind of stuff to just try to get the best performance out of the scope that we can tonight. You can see that we're starting off and things are kind of gonna oscillate and move around a little bit. We didn't get any errors, which means that we have a really good start and a good calibration. It was very happy about that. So we'll let this run for a minute or two. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna start the guiding assistant and we're gonna let that run for a while. What the guiding assistant is gonna do is it is going to examine how everything works. It's gonna examine the worm gear pattern of our mount. Now, as the worm gear spins, it actually creates a big sinusoidal looking wave. Now, what we're going to do is once we gather that information, we're going to put that into Green Swamp Server and we're going to do what's called PEC training. We're going to click one button. It's going to take this big sine wave, combine that with the changes that the guiding assistant is going to make in PHD2, 
and hopefully we're going to get a smaller more concise sine wave which will give us more guiding and just make things really good even though you can see right here it might look like things look pretty herky-jerky but we're actually running at a total rms of around 0 0.67 0 0.68 right now which is pretty good but we can do better so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this little brain here and of course in phd2 you can pretty much leave everything standard that you would need to uh, the only changes that you really need to make is you need to make sure that you have the correct focal length of your guide scope entered in. And you also need to make sure for Green Swamp Server that you have this box checked here that says reverse deck output after a meridian flip. If not, you're, when, you're, when your scope flips, everything's going to get out of control because it is actually going to be getting the opposite commands that it should be. I wanna go in here and actually reset all of this information here so that way the mount is just gonna run in its default configuration since we're starting this all over from scratch with new guiding equipment. You can see that it's kinda of nose diving and kinda of acting a little funky there. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and click and start the guiding assistant. And the guiding assistant is going to basically just stop the guider and it's just going to examine the behavior of the mount and its ability to track the star and once it's done with that it's going to give us some information make some recommendations that we can then apply to the software and then we will do the hardware side with green swamp server so from what i can gather you don't want to get really too concerned about this stuff whenever you're doing all this you'll see how crazy these graphs are and they've went kind of on a nosedive. And what we should see is that as the worm gear goes through its cycles, the wave, we should start to see this come back up and then it'll probably shoot back down. We're gonna let this run for about 20 minutes. All right, so I just let it run for about four and a half minutes here the first time. Usually the first time after you set things up, you'll get some pretty wild numbers, which you can see that we got some uh, pretty big numbers on our declination backlash and everything else. It also gave us some things to apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply those fixes right off the bat. And then we're gonna close out of the guiding assistant, clear everything out, just kind of let it run for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna run it again and see what results it will give us. So our numbers have stabilized here. They've came down pretty good. You can see our RA and deck. The total is around 0.67. The deck is still misbehaving for some reason. Deck's always a little funky on these Skywatcher mounts, so I really wouldn't worry about it a whole lot. Now that I'm happy with everything, we are gonna start up that guiding assistant again and let it run for a longer time and get a little bit more accurate readout of everything. All right, so we're all done, and you can see those big wavy lines. Look like we got some uh, more improvements to make. Deck backlash is pretty crazy. If we click and look at the graphs, you can see everything should follow this line right here, this white line, but instead mine kind of goes out like that. So, eh, it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and apply those changes. And then we will clear everything up and we're going to just pick on a new star and just uh, start auto guiding. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slew to our target for the night, get our image acquisition running, and then we can enable the peck training in the Green Swamp server. So we've done all the stuff in the software side here. Now the Green Swamp server is going to do some of its own math and then it's going to apply that to the mount so we can merge the best things together in order to get the best possible auto guiding results we can. Now you are gonna wanna do this the first time you set things up or if you change like a camera or a guide scope, anything like that. You don't have to do this if you tear your scope up and down every night. This is just to like get your initial system setup going and as long as you put everything back together rel relatively well, you're gonna be just fine. So I've got some frames coming in here on the Heart and Soul Nebula that I'm shooting tonight, and they are looking pretty dang good. Guiding just what we did alone so far 
is just fantastic. 0.58, I've seen it fluctuating and around a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some pec training. We're gonna make this thing handle some weight. So we're gonna pull up the green swamp server interface. And this is pretty good. All we're gonna have to do is just click one button. It's gonna go through in about four or five minutes. Uh, look how it, look how it, my telescope is pointing. I just love this thing. It's so awesome. And then once it's done, yes, we wanna start okay. training. Thank you. And then once it's done with that, then we're gonna apply that. And that should tighten up that graph that we saw in PhD quite a bit. Of course, we're not gonna test that out tonight. Maybe I'll do it at the end of the night. We'll see if I get enough subs that I'm looking for on this object. But once this is done, we're gonna click the little button right next to it that says enable peck and we're good. We should get awesome guiding performance out of our rig. So this is working really great. If you take a look, we're running around 0.39 to 0.45 total RMS air. Definitely got the peck running, everything else. Now, is it gonna work like this every time? Probably not. Seeing conditions, clouds, all that kind of stuff are gonna affect things, where you're shooting, what you're shooting, but this is the best that I've had on this setup so far, and now everything is done. I won't have to touch it again. When I put my next scope on here, the mount is already trained. Probably wanna rerun this every once in a while because things do wear in and wear out, but for now, we're golden. Got these subs coming in that are just looking fantastic. Super happy guy right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was able to help you guys out with something. If you have any further questions on the individual topics covered in the video, don't forget to reach out. Peace.